the very time that we started. So we're still talking about domains. We made sort of two statements about domains. We said that one, we cannot take the square root of a negative number. And we've also said that we cannot divide by zero. And um, that second statement is in one sense kind of straightforward, but we'll spend a little time talking about it. And then we'll look at um, functions that have both square roots and division in them. For now, let's just do uh, relatively straightforward example. I mean, straightforward with the caveat that this might be new to a lot of you. Let's say we have f of x equals 2x divided by x minus 3. And let's say we're asking questions about the domain. Well, I've made two statements. The first statement involved roots, and it's not applicable to this problem. There are no square roots. The second statement is that we cannot divide by zero. And well, we're, we're dividing by x minus three, and we can't divide by zero. So we need x minus three not to be zero. And this inequality, um, or this, I mean, first of all, I think this is new notation. I hope it's pretty straightforward. If we want to say that things are not equal, we write an equal sign and then we put a slash through it. Question. So, so you wouldn't want us to put X does not equal three? Well, we're going to get to that oh, okay. um, because my next observation would be that we can then solve this inequality as if it were an equality. We can add three to both sides and that the statement X is not equal to three. There are a few ways you can write this in terms of notation. Some of you may have seen this in high school or something. Interval from negative infinity to three, union, the interval from three to infinity. I'm not, I'm not going to teach that. I've always kind of disliked that notation, to be honest. It's such a convoluted way of 
of conveying such a simple idea. The notation I'm going to use for something like this is as follows. I write the letter R, that's short for real numbers, which if it's been a while, the real numbers are just the numbers we work with, five pi negative one seventh, just all the numbers we work with in a day-to-day -day life. I'm going to put backslash, And this backslash means excluding. And then in the curly brackets, I am going to list any numbers that I want to kick out. In this case, X isn't allowed to be three. So it's all of the real numbers except for three. I think that notation is easier and more elegant, and it generalizes well if you want to kick out multiple numbers. You want to kick out multiple numbers, you just list them in here with a comma. One statement, I think the reason that students sometimes struggle with this material is this great desire to not just ignore parts of the functions. And I do understand that, but we also need to realize that I didn't forget about the 2x, it just never came up. It doesn't have a square root in it. We're not dividing by 2x. It just wasn't affecting the domain in this problem. Let's, um, let's now combine this with the stuff we were doing Yesterday, let's maybe keep the color constant. Let's say we have the square root of x plus 3. And then we also have x squared minus 1 divided by x. And we wanted to know what's the domain of this function? Where is this function defined? Well, we have this sort of one, two list. Or let's see where I wrote it down here. We have this kind of one to list, and we just take these points one by one and then put together any information we get at the end. So, what information do we get looking at square roots? Well, we know that we can't take the square root of a negative number. So anything under the square root sign cannot be negative. X plus three has to be greater than or equal to zero.
x therefore has to be greater than or equal to negative three, thank you. And this gives us the interval from negative three to infinity. But we're not done yet. What about division? Well, we can't divide by zero. We are dividing by x. Ergo, x cannot be zero. So we've got two pieces of information. We've got that inequality. And then we've got that interval. And all that remains is to put this information together. And this notation here, another reason I like it, is that it generalizes perfectly well. Instead of having all of the real numbers, we've got the numbers from negative three to infinity without the number zero. And once again, um, the denominator of this fraction, sorry, the numerator of this fraction didn't end up affecting the domain. It's important not to, not to try to use these sort of extraneous pieces. We're just looking at the denominators and we're looking at any roots we have and that's all that we're looking at. And that's basically it. I mean, we have a few more comments. It's possible that we have a root and we have a division and we get sort of redundant information. Um, and quick example of that, let's maybe go back to the blue. What happens here if instead of X plus three, we had X minus three. Under that square root, we'll keep the rest of G the same. X squared minus one divided by X. We'll do this problem in the same way. We'll still look at what's under the square root. And we'll look at whatever is in the denominator of the fraction. And we get x is greater than or equal to three. And over here, we have that x isn't zero. And sort of the difference between this example and the last example is that x could never have been equal to zero as long as x is greater than or equal to three. There is no point in taking the interval from three to infinity and kicking zero out of it 
because zero was never in that interval to begin with. If it's not in the interval, we don't need to kick it out of the interval, and we just get the numbers from three to infinity. Any questions so far? Then let's, let's take this exam. Yes, no? Oh, no, I just. That's some, okay. And let's just take part of this problem. Well, not this problem exactly, but let's do something with that x squared minus one. Let's say so. That, that x squared minus one is in the denominator of the fraction. And we are asked questions about the domain. Now, as far as square roots, there aren't any, so not much to say there. As far as division, we're dividing by x squared plus one, x squared minus one, sorry. So we need x squared minus one not to be zero. and we need x squared not to be one. And we'll talk about quadratics later, but perhaps you can solve this without using the quadratic formula. <laughs> x squared equals one has two solutions, one and negative one, and x cannot be either <laughs> of those solutions. And we can now see um, <coughs> how convenient this notation is. All the real numbers except for negative one and positive one. If you have in high school or whatever had to write something like this using intervals and unions, you know that the more numbers you're kicking out, the more complicated and ugly that notation becomes. Here, we don't run into that at all. It's if we want to kick out two numbers, we just have a list of two numbers. If we wanted to kick out three, we have a list of three numbers. So it scales very well. Mm, there's something like this in the homework, but let me do it for you. Let me ask what would happen. Let's see, try to keep these colors the same. What would happen if I had addition there instead of subtraction? Still no roots. Well, now we have x squared plus one is not zero. X squared is not negative one. And X is therefore not 
the positive or negative square root of negative one. But these are the imaginary numbers and we're not working with the imaginary numbers. And much like the situation we had here, the imaginary numbers were never in R to begin with. So we don't have to throw anything out. Our answer to this problem just ends up being all of the real numbers. 